prepared to say that I have a record of over 40 years and that I'm going to beat Joe Biden. All right, people, I'm Dave Rubin. This is the Rubin Report. It's February 5th, 2024. We're live streaming on Rumble, YouTube, and local. Share, tap that notification bell if you have not. And I should tell you that there is no post-game show today. I've got 42 minutes to do this show because immediately after we are hopping in a car heading over to the airport, we're going to D.C., okay? We have our reasons. Uh, Yes, that's right. We're going right to the swamp. Uh, Rumble is opening new studios there. Tomorrow we will be in studio all day long. I'll be doing a live show, normal time, 11 a.m. Eastern. Uh, And then we have interviews with Rand Paul, uh, Ted Cruz, Marsha Blackburn, and a whole bunch of other people. We're trying very hard to get John Fetterman. I just tweeted at him. We've reached out through the proper channels. I want the one sane Democrat. So we're going to try to do that too, but psyched that Rumble's opening studios over there, uh, but we're gonna do a bit of an abbreviated show and no post-game show today, but I will make it up to you. Uh, so let's just dive right into it. Uh, Bill Maher, I've talked about him once or twice on this show, uh, he had, he sits in that kind of last decent liberal position. And as I always say when I play clips of Bill Maher, we may never get him to vote the right way, but he has a huge amount of what I would now say are disaffected liberals who watch his show and they go, okay, maybe he's not gonna get there, uh, but maybe I could vote a little bit of a different way. Maybe my Trump derangement syndrome isn't as intense, or maybe I'm realizing, oh, I don't have the comforts of you know being worth 50 mil and whatever, and, I don't, and being a lifelong bachelor, so I can kind of keep my liberalism, it's safe in a little box, but maybe I can move in a way that he can't. So anyway, he had Patrick Bet David on. Uh, the show the other day. And you know, I'm always talking about how there's this new collection of people. They're not really right, not really left. They're into free speech. They get what's going on in the world and they're all kind of crossing lines. And I'd say we're all right in the middle of that. So I was very happy to see PBD uh, go on the show and they started talking about Gavin Newsom. And uh, unfortunately for Bill, I don't think it went that well. Do you like Newsom? How do you feel about Newsom? Had him on my show Friday. I saw that. And uh, I... I, first of all, I love him. Just You just like a guy or you don't. I've known him for a long time. He's done my show for a long time. Do, do I love everything he does as the governor of California? No, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm undertaxed. Uh, yeah, it's this, I have issues with this state. He's a guy, one reason I want him to run for president, well, is because he's obviously a winner. This guy could f- do it. It's insane that we have the guy, but we can't run him because we have to winner. tiptoe around Biden and the final winner. Well, he would win the election. Oh, so so he would win the election. So he's a talented debater, speaker, communicator, yeah, deflector, and, and politician. And he's right. a smart guy. He's right. he's a smart, real guy with a pair of balls. Do I love everything? No, you never knew what to do with a politician. But first of all, I think if he ran for president, it'd be great because it would force him to move to the center. Now you're running not just in California. I mean, this is California. It's weird. Are, are well. you are you a are you a uh, are you a results driven guy? No, I like to think, watch things yeah. fall apart. I mean, you, you wouldn't build a show that you win, build and win at the levels you won, you know, for decades if you weren't results driven, right? I mean, you're, you're, you're Bill Maher, you know. What, I, what about, what do you mean, what's the point about so results exactly driven? exactly where I'm going with you. So results, so results driven yeah. guy. Right. What areas has Newsom won in? You said he's a winner. Winner of the election. He no, could no. win the election. But based on what, though, do you want results? Like, what has he done? to California to say he's a winner. What, what? Oh uh, God, I don't know. I, it's too, <laughs> Bill, you're a smart guy. You know guy. what, he what, made it what, rain, okay, dude? The, it wasn't yeah, raining. Someone you said that, he said, great uh, job. It wasn't <laughs> raining <laughs> and now it's raining. So he's got my vote. I, okay, you know what? respect. I mean, I, he, I, he, he, I don't know. I don't follow the news. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot there in the end. I don't know. I don't follow the news. Okay, Bill, again, like I'm not going after you personally. I think this is actually a net good when the decent liberals, the facade around the decent liberals gets poked, right? Because Bill, you don't want vaccine mandates. And even though, you know, he's like, I don't know that I'm taxed high enough, in essence is what he's saying. It's like, you know, nothing's working. Like PBD, that's a, that's a fine job by PBD right there, respectfully being like, well, what are the good things that he's done here? And, and Bill can't, 
come up with anything. Like the idea that he wins elections, all right, if you win elections, but then you bring in wokeism and you push DEI and you wreck the economy and you cause 1.4, 1.5 million people to flee over three years, three years of back-to-back -back net loss of migration in California, right? All of the money and the resources that have left, the powerful people, Joe Rogan, Elon Musk, Ben Shapiro, who have left, like at some point, like Bill, you gotta come up with something. Uh, I would say that Patrick had a bit of an advantage here because I don't think he was stoned and Bill was. Anyway, one more clip uh, with two of them related to uh, Trump and vaccines because it's a lot of force and you better, we know what's right for you and you don't, there is no reason on the left. Oh, that, sweetheart, you are preaching to the converted here. This is, I'm always bitching about this. Um, I do but not- You're supporting Biden though. Of course, because we only get two choices. I mean, what is so hard to understand about, about bad and worse? They forced America to take the vaccine bill. 70% Americans took the vaccine and they didn't want to take it. Where, where, a lot of them didn't wait, wait, take wait a second. It. When did the vaccine come about? Under Biden? Uh, no, two, under Trump. No, no, it didn't. It came two days after election was over with. Two days after election was over with, uh, Pfizer announced it was not under under Trump. Oh. They intentionally yeah, kept you're the right. vaccine you're right. after the election, so they gave the victory that's to- That's right. Okay, so again, that's just a nice moment by PD, PBD, just giving facts. And I wanna give some credit to Bill, because I know I'm poking Bill here, but Bill keeps having these conversations. So again, as I always say, it doesn't matter if Bill gets in, but he is willing to have these conversations. And it's good, like when he brought me on his show, which is almost two years ago now, and he said the thing about how Hillary had never said there was an illegitimate election. And I was like, yes, she actually tweeted it. And you could see maybe he woke up a little bit to some degree, or when I went on real time a couple weeks ago, two months ago, and I said, and I debunked right in front of his face and his entire audience face, uh, the Donald Trump very fine people on his whole, uh, very fine people on both sides, Hoax. So look, nobody's hands are clean when it comes to COVID and vaccines and everything else. But the truth is that Donald Trump did push through warp speed, but then he was not for mandates. It was Joe Biden who was for mandates and caused all of the doctors and nurses to be fired and corporations with over a thousand people to fire people and all of the rest of it. So once again, it's one of those things where it's like, Bill, you, you hate the mandates and the vaccines and all that stuff, but you are supporting the guy. And, and when you say, well, it's only a binary choice, we only have these two people. Well, there was another guy, you even interviewed him on your show, Ron DeSantis, who you could have said was more of a decent Republican, but in a weird way, the media liberals want Trump, right? They think he's the most defeatable, but he's also good for the views. But all the point of all of this is, this is a good thing to see because I think what PBD is doing there is he's just calmly laying out a way that people can come back to sanity, right? It's what I try to do here. And I think more and more people are seeing that. Actually, I have proof because uh, we, we are now, it probably will happen today, our YouTube channel is gonna hit its one billionth view. And last month was not only our biggest month ever, but like we, we more than doubled our previously highest held month. So people do want to wake up. I meant to mention that up top. Uh, anyway, we're gonna connect this to a whole bunch of other stuff, speaking about waking up and this border crisis that we have and the fact that we're heading to DC tomorrow as they're about to vote on this crazy bill. Uh, but before we get to that, let me talk to you guys about the wellness company. Guys, this is 2020 all over again. It's an election year after all. Remember event 201 in October of 2019? And what happened when a couple months later when COVID-19 started sweeping the headlines in January? Well, the WEF overlords met January 17th and disease X was on the docket. We covered it. The WEF's website states with fresh warnings from the WHO that an unknown disease X could result in 20 times more fatalities than the coronavirus pandemic. What novel efforts are needed to prepare healthcare systems for the multiple challenges ahead? They got us in 2020, but no matter what's coming in 24, the most important thing you can do is be prepared ahead of time with food, ammo, gold, and medications. That's where the wellness company's medical emergency kit comes in. Avoid hospital wait times, avoid the cost of a doctor's visit or calling an ambulance, avoid getting getting caught unexpectedly when traveling without a healthcare plan. The wellness company's medical emergency kit offers eight life-saving medications, including amoxicillin, z -Pak, and ivermectin for you to keep on hand along with a guidebook for safe use. From tick bites to COVID to extreme bioterror events, every scenario is covered. Go to twc.health slash Rubin and grab your emergency medical kit right now. That's twc.health slash Rubin, uh, code Rubin, which will give you 15% at checkout. Don't wait until you need it. Take back control of your health today with the wellness 
company's medical emergency kit. Kits are only available in the USA. And now back to me. All right. So banged around Bill Maher a little bit gently, didn't stab you, didn't turn the knife, anything like that. But now I'd like to give Bill a little credit because on his main program, Real Time, uh, Bill is getting it when it comes to the Democrat nonsense around the border. The fact that right this very moment, the president who only weeks ago, his entire clown administration was saying there's no crisis at border. Now they're all acknowledging there's a crisis at the border, but they're pretending still that Biden can't just fix it right now. Well, Bill called him out on that. Part two of the acting yeah. is Joe, is, is Joe okay. Biden saying, you know what, if you just give me a new law, a new law, why doesn't the president can fix this? He already has the existing law. And Border Patrol this, this will is also right silly. to your face. I need a piece of yeah. paper from Congress to deal with the border. No, you already have that. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right, so now again, Bill, you are supporting the guy and you voted for the guy last time, so you have to think about that, I suppose, but that is good. He is saying to his liberal audience that we want to get there, and they some of them get there in slow-mo, he's saying to them, Biden can fix this freaking thing right now. It's on Biden, it's not on the Republicans. But speaking of Republicans, Republican leader Mike Johnson, uh, he tweeted out that clip and he wrote this. Even Bill Maher gets it. President Biden absolutely has the authority right now to fix the catastrophe he's created at the border. And that is absolutely true, right? You guys know it. One of those very few things that the federal government is supposed to do is protect the border. Not only are they not protecting the border, now they are in a fight with the states specifically Texas, but it's gonna to come to all the border states and then it'll come to the non-border states too, when they are trying to do something about the border because the federal government will not do their job. Here is Speaker Johnson on NBC, once again explaining, Biden, you could do this right now. We don't need more paper. We don't need more signatures or anything else. You can fix this freaking thing right this very moment. It has to be secured. The president has the authority right now. He doesn't need another act of Congress. He could do it right now, but he's unwilling to do it. As you know, the White House has completely dismissed the allegation that in any way the migrants and surge in migrants have been intentional on the part of the president. In terms of him being able to take action right now, Mr. Speaker, you know as well as I do that an executive order would only be met by legal challenges. You have a chance to do something right now. The details we laid out are not rumors. That is based on negotiators who were in the room does she strike you as a journalist or an activist for the Democrat Party? We know damn well Biden can do this. There are no more laws we need. There are laws on the books that say you cannot have an open border, okay? Uh, the president can do an awful lot by executive action if we needed to do something more. And not that I'm for executive actions. It's complete nonsense. We already went through this bill with you guys last week. The bill which says that they will still allow in 5,000 illegals every day. So it's a bill. We're going to sign a bill. And also we'll tell people how many of them can break this law every single day. 1.8 million people a year. But it, So anyway, I'm going to D.C. tomorrow. I, I mentioned some of the senators and Congress people will be interviewing and I'm going to hold all of their feet to the fire on this thing. I mean, if any of them sign on to this thing, it is an absolute disaster. And by the way, the Democrats have more disasters waiting. This, this one is wild uh, from N Wokeness. Uh, breaking 150 Democrats vote against a bill to deport illegals caught driving while drunk. Uh, <laughs> Here's Representative Pramila Jayapal. She's in the Hamas caucus, and uh, rather than being concerned about the amount of illegals coming here and the crime that we're seeing on our streets and they're kicking homeless people out of shelters and the fentanyl and all that, she's very upset that we keep calling these people illegals. Are you really saying that we think the best use of our very limited federal government resources is to work on deporting a green card holder who decided to sleep in their car rather than drive home drunk from a bar? A green card holder not trying to drive drunk, just trying to stay warm? I certainly don't think that's a good use of our resources. It's certainly not a good use of our time on this floor. But my colleagues on the other side of the aisle have made it clear that they're not interested in sensible solutions, just in sensationalism. This bill is another example of that. And I hope my colleagues will stop referring to people as illegals. People are human beings. They have different statuses. Some are undocumented. 
If you want to say some are illegal, but let's not call human beings illegal. Tired of that language. I urge my colleagues to reject this bill and I yield back the balance of They are illegal and I have some language that I can't say about you, but I'm going to write on this piece of paper and I'm going to send it to someone in locals. You know what I wrote. <laughs> it's that word. That's what I wrote here. And I'm going to sign it, Dave Rubin, and we're going to send it to somebody on locals. Um, did you also catch the fact that she wants, she's encouraging people with green cards to drive drunk on top of everything else? These people are absolutely extraordinary. They are illegal. They should not be here. We can talk about pathway to citizenship. We got to close the border, but the Democrats are here to destroy the country. Yes, there are five or six semi-sane ones, and I will keep encouraging them to come to the promised land, but like they are here to destroy everything. You want more evidence of it? Uh, well, we showed you the video last Last week of two police officers having the shit kicked out of them by a bunch of illegals, Sumi Jayapal. Uh, and uh, of course, then they were taken into custody. And, and I think we've got an image of them taken into custody where they seem like nice fellas. They were just, you know, they were just partying, just having fun on the streets of New York City. Uh, here's video of them leaving because they were arrested for a moment and then immediately released. They kicked the crap out of a bunch of New York City police officers. I guess that's not a problem anymore, so here's video of them walking out. Just into Fox News now, NYPD making two more arrests, illegal immigrants, and that attack on officers. Those suspects also allegedly stole an officer's cell phone. Well, that'll help them track you down. So a fifth illegal immigrant accused of attacking two New York City police officers over the weekend showed no remorse or regret. He was seen, as you can see, giving his two middle fingers to the cameras moments after being released without bail. I mean, it's extraordinary, right? Like if this was a movie, you'd be like, there would be no way that anyone would be so brazen to be flipping off the camera and the guy that's not hiding his face and why were they let out? So you might go, okay, why were they let out, Dave? This story can't be real. Well, the district attorney of New York, his name is Alvin Bragg, and you might know that name because he's one of the guys going after Donald Trump for a multitude of nonsensical issues. Uh, we've got a tweet here from Colin Rugg explaining what the district attorney's plan is. New York City District Attorney Alvin Bragg is defending his decision to let the illegals go who allegedly beat up the NYPD officers, says the video evidence wasn't enough. Insane. The illegal immigrants involved in the incident have since reportedly fled to California. In a court of law, our profound obligation is to make sure we have right people charged with the right crimes. I don't think New Yorkers want to charge the wrong person, Bragg said. There is a presumption of pretrial non-incarceration for every case except those with charges of homicide or the death of a victim. Okay, guys, first off, nobody is debating whether it's those five people we just showed you in, the, in that image, whether those were the people that beat up the cops. Those are the people who beat up the cops. Nobody's debating it, okay? I suppose Bragg is debating it. Nobody else is debating it. They clearly are emboldened. They walk out of the, the police station and they're flipping the bird to everybody. And then of course, where did they go? Congratulations, California. You've got five more future voters. If you think that the insanity of New York could not get worse, well, I have a bridge I'd like to sell you, uh, and it's filled with illegals. Um, this is what's going on in New York City right now. This is wild. Uh, from the New York Post, New York City launches $53 million program to hand out prepaid credit cards to migrant families. So they are now going to take more of the taxpayer money. And by the way, their taxpayer base in New York City, it's getting less and less because they're all freaking moving down. All the successful people who pay all the taxes are getting the hell out of that shithole. And they're moving down to Florida and to Texas and to Tennessee, but they're then squeezing. They put the squeeze on the remaining sane people. We're gonna take more. Oh, you're, you, get, you work for a living? You abide by the law? You don't jump the turnstile? You're screwed, MFR. We're gonna take more of your money and we're gonna hand it to those people. And they kick the crap out of the cops. Okay, you, you, but you might say, Dave, 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 you, that's just New York City. It's New York City that's crazy. It's not the whole state that's crazy. Well, I'd like to introduce you to a woman named Kathy Hochul, who is the governor of uh, New York. And, uh, she has sort of expanded this throughout New York City. It's happening everywhere. So check this out. This is wild. This is CNN. They're analyzing what's going on with these migrants and why they do this in New York and why it only happens in these blue cities and states. Check this out. In the back. You don't, you don't touch our police officers. You don't touch anybody. Thank you, everybody. 
I mean, we're hearing a change when it comes to immigration in general from President Biden on down. Do you hear her talk about that? It is also directly related to the fact that these were police officers. Does that have any impact? Does that change anything? Well, it's so complicated because, you know, you're a New Yorker. You move through the city every day, as I do. We see these people. We touch these people. They're out looking for work. They're delivering our food. They're at the gas stations and the car wash. Uh, I mean, these are people who came in waves, you know, 170,000 probably to New York City. Um, but within that group, this hardworking, you know, throngs of people in search of hope and a better life. There is this one percenter, you know, criminal element that looks at a different opportunity here. These individuals, I went over their rap sheets yesterday, mm -hmm. multiple charges, grand larceny, robbery, attempted robbery, grand larceny, grand larceny. Uh, this particular crew operated on mopeds and scooters. They were doing organized retail theft. They were doing snatches on the street, iPhones, iPads, clothing, so on and so forth. Uh, one of them that they are still seeking has 10 charges on one day because he's part of a pattern that's been going on. And I'm looking at the dates that their arrest started, which is probably close to when they got here. They've only been here a couple of months. So what the detectives are telling me is they have crews here that operate in New York, do all their stealing, then go to Florida to spend the money and then come back. And I'm like, well, why don't they just stay and steal in Florida? And they said, because there you go to jail. Oh, Fair point. Keep us back. Fair point. Oh, well, but what? Jail? Laws? I can't believe it. Florida. And then they go back to New York to steal again. So I guess as a Floridian, I should thank these people. Keep doing it, Oko. Go for it, Adams. Open up all of your stores. Let them steal all your stuff. Allow them to come down here. Our con well, I don't want them down here, but you can, see the, you can see the logic in it. Spend all your cash down here. Try to steal some pants at Lululemon and get your brains blown out. That would be just fine. But we'd rather you just go back and keep doing it. But that's how ridiculous this entire thing is. By the way, the, the guy there who, is, uh, who said that, another, an interesting piece of this is the liberal, the guilty mind of the liberal, where he's like, you know, there's 170,000 of these people and many of them are good and blah, 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 it's these gangs. And by the way, he is making a point of saying that they know exactly who kicked the crap out of the cops. So again, Alvin Bragg is just outright lying there when he says the video evidence is not enough. They know exactly what they're doing, where they came from and everything else. And congratulations once again to California because you've got five, five more of them. Um, but his point about, you know, most of them are hardworking and blah, 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 and it's only these criminals. It doesn't matter. We don't know who they are. We don't, you're not allowed to come here illegally anyway. That is the original sin, right? We can deal with all, oh, but some of them are very nice. Okay. So we can try to figure some of that out, but not until we deal with the root cause of the problem, which you people keep making worse. But now let's get to some solutions because yes, that Florida place that they mentioned where we have law and order and you're not allowed to steal stuff and we don't let illegals in. And actually, if you do get here, we're going to send you up to Martha's Vineyard and everything else. Well, it's because in large part of a guy named Ron DeSantis who ran for president, and it did not work out. But I got to tell you, in light of the news in the last three weeks or so, I am very happy that he will remain the governor down here. And here he is calling out some of this pure BS. And you see some of these images, you see some of these people in, in uh, New York City committing crimes, and the sense of entitlement on some of these illegal aliens is unbelievable. They act like they have a right to illegally come into our country. I'm sorry, you do not have that right. And if we were a country that was serious, we'd be sending these people back home to their home countries. That's how you enforce the rule of law. Biden's not doing that. He could secure the border if he wanted to. Um, and he's choosing not to do it. So I don't think they're going to end up with any type of legislation that's going to actually solve the problem. Uh, I think in some respects it may codify the, the problems and, and kind of give Biden a campaign issue to where he says, oh, well, they wouldn't give me the authority. He has the authority now. Uh, if, he, if he wanted to do it, he could do it. As always, the guy's just laying out the truth, saying it how it is, and saying how he would do things differently. What he's referring to at the end there, of course, is this ridiculous bill. And so that is great to see. Ron DeSantis, he's not a, he's not a congressman anymore, he's not a senator, he's the governor, so it's not like he's gonna vote on this thing, but he's making a point and saying this bill is pure BS. And if you throw Biden a bone here, yes, we'll have a bipartisan bill and the bipartisan bill will allow 1.8 million illegals in per year. You're actually handing Biden something. It's just all complete nonsense. So it is good to see Ron DeSantis back down here wielding political power like a boss, like the way he was doing it 
before the campaign. Uh, and by the way, the a bunch of red state uh, governors are helping out in Texas. Of course, uh, that's Greg Abbott's move down there to fight the federal government on this. But Florida, we're stepping up. This is this is beautiful. Check it out. We have stepped up probably more than any other state has stepped up, and we're proud to do that. However, uh, we don't think this is enough. Uh, I believe that a state has a right to fortify its own borders. Uh, and so if Texas is helping to erect barriers, putting up razor wire, doing other things to keep illegal aliens out, I want to be helpful with them doing that. I don't want to be part of the federal government trying to tear down these barriers and let more people in illegally. This is crazy that this is the case. Uh, so today, uh, we are going to fortify our presence along the southern border. Uh, we're providing up to one battalion of Florida National Guard, uh, as well as uh, our first ever deployment of the Florida State Guard. And the goal is to in, in, help Texas fortify this border, help them strengthen the barricades, help them add barriers, help them add the wire that they need to so that we can stop this invasion once and for all. And the states have to. Yeah, that's right. Everything there is right. That's how we do this. The states have to do this. The federal government did not create the states. The states created the federal government. The federal government is now in, in complete dereliction of its duty. It is exacerbating a problem and these dingbats in Congress and the Senate are, are only going to make it worse. There is no such thing as a bipartisan deal right now. It's not a, yes, you might get enough people to sign it so you can say it's bipartisan, but if it's just going to make this thing worse, and as DeSantis referenced in the earlier clip, codify the nonsense, right? B Biden will be able to take that to the voters and see, oh, you see, it's not just my fault, we have a bipartisan bill. So it's obviously the Republicans fall too. So yes, it is beautiful to see that in Florida, uh, that battalion, it's about a thousand troops that we are gonna send over to, to Texas to help. And by the way, that's in Florida's own self-interest, right? It, the, the border is porous in Texas, mostly also Arizona, et cetera. But it's like, okay, if we can stop it there, then those people won't get to Florida. Florida has other uh, benefits uh, and advantages because we're a peninsula and we've got a Coast Guard. So, you know, he's doing everything he can. So good people are stepping up. So you call out the nonsense, you, you, you fight for what's right, and then actually do something about it, uh, rather than just complaining about scary words. So I wanna throw back to that Jayapal clip for just a moment. And I hope my colleagues will stop referring to people as illegals. People are human beings. They have different statuses. Some are undocumented. If you want to say some are illegal, but let's not call human beings illegal. Tired of that language. I urge my colleagues to reject this bill and I yield back the balance of so that's someone who doesn't want to solve a problem and who wants to go out of their way to demonize everyone who does want to solve a problem. Now, Jayapal and the, and the wackadoodle progressives that are for all this, who hate the country in the first place. I mean, they tell you they hate the founding of the country, the country's systemically racist and everything. What she's doing there in, in a bizarre way is, is, it's not that clever anymore because a lot of people get it. But what she's trying to do there is she's saying, they, but if you call them illegal, what you're doing is dehumanizing them. And you can't dehumanize people because they're the oppressed. And if they're oppressed, well then you're the oppressor. Just wait till someone like Jayapal and the rest of her Hamas caucus friends have the power to do the oppressing. They are, they are not gonna be too kind to you, me, or anyone that we know. And I think we can connect this to many things in history. There was a, a great podcast a couple days ago, Jordan Peterson, it was two, two of my all-stars, Jordan Peterson and Michael Malice, uh, talking about this oppressed oppressor narrative and what societies will do when things start getting out of whack. What happened in Rwanda even though it was quite a peaceful state, although poor, was that the notion of group identity became paramount. And then one ethnic group was set against the other. And what happened in Rwanda is reminiscent of the sorts of things, perhaps faster and even more brutal, possibly, than what happened in the Soviet Union. A Mil million people killed in a span of mere months, right, in the most brutal possible way. It was a consequence of the valorization of group identity. You saw the same thing happening in Russia, right, because, and this happened soon after the revolution, is that the, the communists were attempting to eradicate bourgeoisie individuality, and so people started to be classified and judged by group guilt. And then almost immediately after the revolution, 
if you were a landowner or a property owner or anybody who'd had even a modicum of success under the czars. Or your you were, family. Or your family. Well, that's the next thing. You were classified as an oppressor and as an enemy of the people. But immediately it spread to your family. Even if you didn't own anything, if you had people in your ancestry who ever dared to own anything, which meant everyone who was even vaguely, they identified success with oppression, you know, which is something that we're trying very hard to do in our culture at the moment too, which is absolutely catastrophic. We're doing the same bloody things, right? Dividing people into groups, making group identity paramount, identifying success itself with, with oppression. So do you see... Do you see what they are doing? They are the oppressed, we are the oppressors, and they are trying to upend the system. They wanna bring in as many people as they can control and they can bring in more voters. This is not a grand conspiracy theory or anything else. Just remember, it was only until about two weeks ago that the Democrats and the mainstream media even acknowledged there was an issue at the border. A whole bunch of us have been talking about it for a year, right? And it was bubbling up mostly on Twitter, thanks to Elon Musk, for a year. I've shown you a million videos of Corinne Jean-Pierre and before her Jen Psaki and Biden himself and Kamala and all these people, there's no problem at the border, the border's secure, blah, blah, blah. But a whole bunch of us, we started ringing the bells, right? Then they start paying attention. Now they're acknowledging there's a problem and we damn well better do something about it now. It might be too late, but if we don't start doing something about it now, at least to delay the, the insanity, then what Jordan is laying out there will happen here. We will have sectarian violence on our streets. We will have religious violence on our streets. We have no idea the motives of these people that have come in, and especially in light of all of the world events since October 7th, like, there's some problems. So, so what is the solution? Well, I think the solution, partly, is what PBD said up top, right? You call out the people who are mistaken about certain issues. So, Mar, you like Gavin Newsom, well, tell me some of the things he did, and then you can sort of watch it happen in real time where Bill doesn't know. You can look at someone like Ron DeSantis who goes out there and does everything he says he's gonna do and then cr creates a state that's rock solid so now he can help other states uh, do that same thing, right, that blueprint. And then, this is, a, this is a great story. There was an election yesterday in El Salvador and the current president, Nayib Bukele, uh, one re-election by like 85, 87%. This guy has turned El Salvador, which was one of the most dangerous gang-run countries in the entire world, uh, he has turned it into a real gem at the moment where they are getting ton of economic activity and safety. The whole country is changing around. I actually went to El Salvador a couple of years ago. My brother-in-law was living there and he was doing some, some volunteer work down there and, and they had to have, the Americans had to live in a little community with a lot of barbed wire. A lot of barbed wire and you weren't allowed to go outside because you know barbed wire works. Somebody should tell that to uh, Joe Biden. Anyway, uh, Naib Bukele, who just won in an absolute landslide, he crushed the, the gangs and everything else. Uh, he, uh, he gave a little talk about uh, how we should start doing things right so that the right people, the good people, the citizens are rewarded instead of always looking out for other people. How about we look out for ourselves? Creo que los derechos humanos, si bien nadie duda que los reos tienen derechos humanos, pero yo creo que algo que no se ha hecho y ningún procurador lo ha hecho antes, o por lo menos yo no recuerdo, discúlpeme si usted lo hizo y no me acuerdo yo, pero lo, no han defendido los derechos humanos de la gente honrada. Generalmente defienden como que todo el enfoque de derechos humanos internacional o de las ONGs incluso esté enfocado en los derechos de los delincuentes, que tienen derechos. Nadie dice que los delincuentes no tienen derechos, pero ¿por qué el enfoque es siempre en los derechos de los delincuentes? Y la gran mayoría de la gente honrada, nadie le importan sus derechos. En este país pasamos 30 años siendo acribillados, asesinados, renteados, violados, extorsionados, amenazados viviendo en zozobra y nadie dijo nada, pero de repente agarran a los que matan, a los que rentean, a los que violan y de repente hay que ver los derechos humanos de ellos. Sí, tendrán derechos humanos, pero, pero son más importantes los derechos humanos de la gente honrada y creo que eso es algo importante, procuradora, que debe de también eh, investigarse y debe de también reportarse, porque si no, entonces no estamos hablando de derechos humanos, estamos hablando de derechos de, de los delincuentes que creo que son eh, dos cosas distintas. Derechos humanos son todos. Y los derechos que, y las personas que no tienen sus derechos restringidos son las personas honradas, porque los otros tienen derechos humanos, pero tienen derechos restringidos. Por ejemplo, no tienen derecho al voto, no tienen derecho a la actividad económica, no tienen derecho a la libertad. ¿Por qué cometieron un delito? Entonces, si se les restringe en Estados Unidos, algunos no tienen derecho a la vida porque les ponen a la silla eléctrica. 
Entonces, si se pueden restringir algunos derechos humanos tan fundamentales como el derecho a la vida, en el caso de los países que tienen pena de muerte, ¿por qué en el caso de los países pobres o en el caso de los países en vías de desarrollo del tercer mundo, están encima que los delincuentes deben de tener derechos, pero cuando hablamos de los derechos de la población, ahí todo el mundo se queda callado y ahí ya no importa, y lo que tenemos que hacer es seguir velando por los derechos de los delincuentes. Entonces, si bien nosotros vamos a respetar los derechos de los delincuentes, y lo estamos haciendo y lo hemos estado haciendo todo este tiempo, pero nuestra prioridad va a ser los derechos de la población honrada, que son los que no tienen sus derechos restringidos porque no cometieron. For those of you listening on the audio podcast who don't speak English, he basically said Jayapal is wrong. That was the thrust of it. Uh, the thrust of it is stop as sane societies, caring about people who don't care about you. Stop treating illegals as if they are better or more worthy of resources and everything else than the legal people who are in these countries paying taxes, doing the right thing. How about you start, all of us, whether it's down in El Salvador, it's here in the United States, or it's across the pond in the UK, how about start caring about the people who are in your civilizations, who have built your culture and built your buildings and built your societies and expanded more freedoms than you can possibly freaking imagine. Imagine if government started working for those people. Instead of having people like Pramaya Jayapal, who's mostly concerned that we're calling illegal people illegal. The choice is yours, ladies and gentlemen. With all of that being said, I'm off to the swamp. That's right, we're going to DC, bunch of interviews tomorrow, but we will be live from the brand new Rumble Studios uh, at 11 a.m. as always. My full interview, which is really catching fire, Elon tweeted out, uh, with Dr. Drew is up right now. And uh, I guess, oh, so no post-game show. And uh, I leave you with my thoughts about going to DC, goodbye. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious.